You're listening to Josh on Classic Hits, 92.5 KVPI. And joining us this morning is Elizabeth Wagmeister of Page Six TV and Variety. Good morning, Elizabeth, and thanks for coming on. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So it is December. We're in the middle of the holiday season. Several films are releasing this month. What are some of the movies that are getting the most buzz? You know, it's always an interesting time because the holiday movie season, of course, that's the biggest money maker of the whole film industry. December is really the richest time of the year for the film industry, certainly at the box office. And you always have a combination of family-friendly movies, superhero movies that you know are going to do well at the box office, but then thrown into the mix are also some lower-budget films, some indie films, because those are the films that are going to go into contention for the Oscars, which, of course, uh, are in late February. So, you know, a movie that's really on the radar of critics is the favorite. This is a period piece, and it stars Emma Stone, Rachel Weisz, and Olivia Coleman. It is getting fantastic reviews. Everybody in the industry who's seeing it absolutely loves it. And the Golden Globe nominations were just announced a few moments ago, this morning actually, and all three of the women who star in The Favorite were nominated. Uh, and I think that that is going to bring some more awareness to this film because right now I think a lot of people are saying The Favorite. I've never even heard of that. But now that it's been nominated, I think that uh, there'll be some rise in awareness to that. And another film that is getting a ton of praise from critics is a film called Green Book. Uh, it stars Viggo Morgensen and Mahershala Ali, so obviously two incredibly talented actors there. And I have to tell you, our film critic at Variety, we just did a piece on this together, and he said that he believes that this is the best performance of Viggo Mortensen's career and also the best performance of Mahershala Ali's career. And, of course, Mahershala Ali, he won the Oscar for Moonlight. Uh, so this is like a, a buddy road trip film about two, uh, two men, a, a white man and a black man, who uh, Viggo Mortensen plays this Italian guy who he is the driver of Mahershala Ali's character. And it's really, you know, an uplifting film about an unlikely friendship that is formed. Let's talk a little about Mary Poppins Returns. Are you expecting this to be a big hit for Disney? I am expecting it to be a huge hit for Disney. I think this is going to be the biggest box office hit of the movie season, perhaps the biggest of the year. I think this movie is going to make hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billion with the B. Um, I think this is what you're really looking for when you're looking for a holiday hit. This is a movie that you can bring a five-year-old to and you can bring a 95-year-old to. Everybody knows Mary Poppins, and for those who don't, who might be under the age of 10, now they're going to learn, and this is going to be their version of Mary Poppins. Now, this stars Emily Blunt and Lin-Manuel Miranda, who Lin-Manuel Miranda is, of course, the creator and the star of the huge Broadway smash hit. Hamilton, and you know, my sources tell me that originally when this film was being conceived, uh, they always wanted Emily Blunt. That was someone who they knew they wanted to be Mary Poppins, but originally they wanted a big star to be the male lead, uh, a really big name. But Lin-Manuel Miranda, first of all, he's no slouch. He is certainly a big name if you're a fan of Broadway and theater, uh, but obviously he's the creator of one of the biggest Broadway hits of all time. He has the acting and the singing chops, so that's why they went with him. So you're going to see some real talent on the screen there. Uh, both Emily Blunt and Lin-Manuel were just nominated for Golden Globes for Mary Poppins, so now it's getting some critical acclaim. And this is just, it's a, it's a spectacle. I mean, even when you watch the footage, it just is visually stunning, visually appealing. And it's not a remake of the original. It's actually a completely new story. So this is going to be the new version of Mary Poppins for a new generation. Right, and it's Disney, and everything they touch seems to turn to gold, so I'm pretty sure they'll be fine. Aquaman is a movie I'm looking forward to, just based on the footage I've seen. Will this, though, be the movie that really gets the DC Extended Universe going after Wonder Woman? Okay, you know, that is actually, I'm so glad that you said that, because that's the big question that is on critics' minds right now. You know, the DC Universe, uh, they haven't had so many critical hits uh, in recent years, but obviously Wonder Woman was a huge success, a huge critical hit, and a very historical uh, movie. So the question on critics' minds is really, is Aquaman the film that's really going to kind of save DC and uh, put it on on a on an upward um, momentum. You know, what I mean by Save DC is just from the critical sense. Of course, their movies have made a ton of money, and even if some movies uh, haven't made as much as expected, and certainly not as much as some Marvel films, uh, they still make hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, uh, Aquaman is the first standalone Aquaman film. You know, we've seen Aquaman just kind of 
in the background and some other stories, but uh, Jason Momoa, who you know from Game of Thrones, stars as Aquaman, and Amber Heard plays the female lead. So I think that this will be a big hit. Uh, usually when we see superhero comic book films, they are a hit, especially during the holiday season. So I think other than Mary Poppins Returns, this will be uh, a big film. And I also think that Bumblebee, which is another Transformer movie, uh, if we needed another one, I think that <laughs> that is also going to bring out audiences because these are all films that have embedded fan bases. You know, people know Transformers, people know Mary Poppins, people certainly know Aquaman. And lastly, speaking of comic book movies, Deadpool 2, it's making its way back to the movies. Exactly how will this one be different from the one released earlier this year? So it's being released as a PG-13. So the first Deadpool was rated R, and that was actually one of the first you know, superhero movies to be rated R. And at the time that that was released, which I believe the first Deadpool was 20. 16, I want to say. Uh, I might be wrong there, but the first Deadpool was obviously a huge hit. Nobody expected it to make that much money at the box office, but film executives were really kind of worried at the beginning, saying, is the R rating going to alienate viewers? You know, typically these comic book films bring out families together, and they were worried that people might be uh, alienated by the R rating. Now, of course, it was a huge success. It did extremely well, but there's no doubt about it. When you put a PG-13 rating on a film, you're certainly going to be able to, you know, bring the teens, at least, that you might not be able to bring when it's an R-rated movie. So I think this is a complete money grab, and I don't mean that in a negative way. It's smart. You know, Deadpool is a huge success. People love the movie. They love the character. They love Ryan Reynolds. And if there's a more somewhat family-friendly rating, at least for those over 13 or under, depending how you parent your kids, <laughs> I think that, uh, that, you know, this is just a chance for audiences to come back to theaters. I think uh, absolutely Fox is getting all they can out of Deadpool before Disney buys them out. Uh, thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> thanks so much, Elizabeth, for joining us. Guys, you can check out her work on Page 6 TV and Variety. Also visit page6.com. Page 6 TV airs weekdays, and you can stream it on Hulu the day after. You'll also find her work, again, covering the television industry for Variety and Variety.com. Elizabeth, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Have a great day.